Let us listen for the word of God that comes to us from the book of Acts. So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, is this the time when you would restore the kingdom to Israel? And he replied, It is not for you to know the times or periods that the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in Judea, and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were watching, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. While he was going, and they were gazing up toward heaven, suddenly two men in white robes stood by them. They said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up toward heaven? This Jesus who has been taken up from you into heaven will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. Then they returned to Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day journey away. When they had entered the city, they went into the room upstairs where they were staying. Peter and John and James and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James, son of Alphaeus, Simon the Zealot, and Judas, son of James. All these were constantly devoting themselves to prayer, together with certain women, including Mary, the mother of Jesus, as well as his brothers. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. I invite you to pray for me as I pray for you this morning. Oh God, may your Holy Spirit be upon us. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable to you, O God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. The scripture this morning says you will receive power. I don't think it was also only meant for those people so long ago. But this is what the power of the Holy Spirit can do. This is what it did for those people. Power to do what they can. Power to ask for help. And the power to receive help with grace. Can you imagine after Jesus disappeared and how, how much in grief the disciples were and the people who followed him. And they didn't know what to do. But Jesus had promised them that the Holy Spirit would come upon them and would give them power. And sometimes when we feel so powerless ourselves, there is always, always the power of the Holy Spirit that can come upon us if we but ask. I imagine in the early church, they did feel helpless without Jesus, not knowing what to do. The Holy Spirit gave me these words to say to you this morning. The Holy Spirit gave them the power to do what they knew already how to do. The Holy Spirit gave them the power to ask for help, to pray to God for help or to ask each other. If you remember in the early church, they were so scattered. Some would come to the synagogue. A lot would meet in people's homes and in secret because they killed Jesus, who's next. And so that was one of the things that they had learned to do was to gather and those who could afford it bring food for everyone. 
And for those who couldn't, this was their one chance to eat that week. And so it was a time for them to come together and to ask for help from each other. Can somebody help me get my crop in? Can somebody help me take care of my child for a while? I have an idea of what we can do as the church to, to help spread the word of Jesus. I need your help. I have an idea about how we can serve people who have even less than we do. I need your help. And so that's how, as they gathered, and that's what brought them together, the, their willingness to pray to God for help and to ask each other for help because that's, that's what made the early church. And the third part was to be able to receive that help with grace. God gave them the power to do what they could do. But they had to receive that power. It's just like, and, and sometimes it's hard to ask and even harder to receive. Often, I've seen people receive compliments and you're just kind of embarrassed or, oh, that's just, hey, you know, if you receive it, it's a gift. Receive it. God gives us gifts all the time. And to receive it with gratitude is what we are called to do. That's what the Holy Spirit gives us the power to do, is to receive with grace. And so I think that's how the early church stayed together. They, they learned how to do what they could do and to ask each other for help and to receive that help. They learned to pray to God for help from the Holy Spirit and to receive that Spirit and do what the Spirit had called them to do. And I think the same works for us in the church. God gives us, or the Holy Spirit gives us the power to do what we can. John Wesley said, do all the good you can by all the means you can, in all the ways you can, in all the places you can, at all the times you can, to all the people you can, as long as ever you can. That's what the leader who started the Methodist Church said. We are called to do what our leader has asked us to do. And it's okay to use that power of the Holy Spirit to help yourself as well as others. If you're overwhelmed, and some of us get that way in the church, if you're feeling overwhelmed with doing all you can, ask for help. That's why we're here. There are people sometimes who just want to be asked, can you help me with this project? Can you help me in the kitchen? Can you help me with the floors? Thank you, Gretchen. You came this morning and cleaned our floors, and that was a big help. Thank you. I think the Holy Spirit was talking to you this morning, and I think maybe Patsy was too. That's what we do. We ask each other for help, and we pitch in. We also claim the power to ask for help. The power to do what we can and the power to ask for help. That's what the Holy Spirit gives us the power to do. And you will receive power. But it's really hard for us to ask. It was even hard for the kids to ask and they knew what was in the bag. There's something about us that makes it very difficult to ask for help. There's all kinds of reasons why we struggle to reach out for assistance. There are fears around asking for help. A fear of appearing weak. A fear of appearing not helpful. A fear of feeling incompetent, of being rejected, of burdening others, or being impolite. 
a great psychologist says all of these fears are unfounded, but don't they keep us down? The Holy Spirit wants to lift us up and these fears keep us down. And guess what? These fears are in our heads and they can. all we have to do is ask the Holy Spirit to take that fear away. And we can ask. And when you ask, there's always a risk. There's a risk somebody's going to say no or a risk somebody's going to look at you kind of funny. Or, you know, there's always a risk in asking for anything. But when you do... Be clear about what you need. When you ask for help, say, I'm, I need help drying the dishes in the kitchen. I need help sweeping up the crumbs in the fellowship hall. I need help folding the bulletins for Sunday. I need help with the litter just every Sunday. But ask for what you need and be sure you know when you ask for help exactly what you need. Be thoughtful about who to ask. Now, I'm not going to ask Anne, if she were here, I'm not going to ask her to go and sweep the floor. That woman can barely get around. So you have to be careful about who you ask and what their abilities are and, and how, how much they can actually do. And I wouldn't ask, I wouldn't ask Sandy right now because she has a, a wounded hip. But I, I probably would ask, I'd probably ask you, Jan, if I needed something like that. And so be careful. think about who you want to ask to do something. But don't be afraid to ask. The Holy Spirit has removed that fear from us, and we are called to be God's people and to be in God's mission. And then think about the specifics. When you ask somebody for help, think about who you want to help and what specifically you want done and where you need it done, and when you need it done, and perhaps even why. It's kind of like the, old, the journalists when they do an interview, who, what, where, when, why. Yes, and you need to ask those, ask those questions of yourself when you ask somebody for help. And when help comes, be brave enough to accept it with grace. When some, you ask for help and somebody says yes, just receive it. It's coming from the power of the Holy Spirit. Receive it and say thank you. But it requires allowing yourself to be vulnerable. We're always vulnerable when we ask for help because we're always vulnerable to somebody saying no. And so what if they do? That just gives us one, more, one last person we have to ask. And we have to examine our own beliefs on receiving. And there's something about our culture that says sometimes it's not polite to ask or it's not polite to receive. Or sometimes I've seen people give gifts and somebody, oh, you shouldn't have. You know, that's not receiving with grace. When somebody gives you a gift, you receive it and say, thank you. Then you decide when you look at it whether or not it's that good a gift. But you always receive it with grace and say, thank you. And that's the same way it is with the power of the Holy Spirit. That is a gift. And what we do is we receive it and say thank you and do what it calls us to do. And when we receive, we receive whatever it is. If someone to, were come around and fill your coffee cup at fellowship hour, that's a gift. And you receive it and say thank you. It's always a gift. And everything we have in life is a gift from God, even the air we breathe. And sometimes we, are, we're, we just think we're so entitled to everything, we forget to say thank you and receive it in grace. And I'm here to tell you the power of the Holy Spirit has come upon us, and we simply have to receive it. Someone gives you a gift. Oh, I got a gift this morning. A new book to read from a couple of guys in the church. And when I lend somebody a book, I say, pay it forward. You know, I've already read it, and if you've read it and enjoyed it, give it to somebody who hasn't. 
any time we always need to pay pay it forward that's what the holy spirit calls us to do when we receive a gift pay it forward and when someone gives us a gift it is out of love whether we not whether or not we totally feel it or not but it's out of love that gifts are given and so take a moment when somebody gives you a gift and they say oh no you shouldn't ask say Thank you. And feel the love that goes with the gift. Receive the love. Receive the power that comes with it. And then we need to learn to practice accepting help wherever we are. It's okay to ask for help. It's because most people are sitting around. Doing, when I was on the train, I had trouble getting my backpack on it. This woman sitting right next to me just jumped up and helped me. I never thought to ask for help, but she did. And I got a, I had this big old heavy backpack. And, and, and then we started a conversation, and, and I learned something very, very important from her. She was getting ready to go on a bicycle ride. And we talked about our age, and she was the same age I was and about 50 pounds lighter. And she said to me, she said, at our age, we have to keep moving. We have to keep moving. And I thought, you know, that was such a gift. That was a bigger gift to me than, than, uh, than getting help with my backpack. And so we are called to be brave enough. It takes bravery to accept what has been given to us. And we need to be brave enough to accept what the Holy Spirit has called us to do. We need to be brave enough to receive the power of the Holy Spirit. Are we? Are we brave enough to say, come, Holy Spirit, come, and to receive that gift with grace? I think we are. I think we're a brave bunch. I've seen people asking for help, but I want to see more. I want to see more people asking for help, and I want to see more people receiving help from one another. That's what we're called to be. We're the church, and the Holy Spirit gives us that power. I've talked about the church. Now I want to get a little personal here. The Holy Spirit gives us the power to do what we can do in our own lives. Especially in times of trouble. Do what we can. And sometimes that's not very much. Sometimes when we're sick, sometimes when we're grieving, we do well to feed ourselves and to get back and forth from the kitchen to the bedroom, as I was with my cold. But we do what we can. And the Holy Spirit gives us the power to ask for help. I had several people calling me while I was sick and say, what can I do for you? What can I do for you? I mean, I was down to my last can of chicken noodle soup, and I was going to ask. But I found another one in the pantry. And I would have been... You know, and, and we have to learn how to ask for help. The Holy Spirit gives us the power to ask for help when we can't do it for ourselves. And the Holy Spirit gives us the power to receive help with grace. A week before I went on vacation, I was overcome with all the grief that we had been through, with all that was going on in the church. And I was to the point, I was getting crazy. I was saying things and doing things that were just not typically me. And I went to the doctor and asked for help. And I went to my therapist and asked for help. And I was ready to receive whatever they had to offer. 
And we have to be able to receive help with grace. And the Holy Spirit gives us that power to move forward and to be, do all that God has called us to do. And sometimes we get stuck. I don't know what to do next. I was stuck. Called the district superintendent and she said, you need a vacation. So I did one. You will receive power. That's the promise of Jesus to the disciples and to all of us. You will receive power to do what you can. You will receive power to ask for help when you need it. Or even if you think you don't. And you will receive power to receive help with grace and gratitude. That is the power of the Holy Spirit. And it's available for all of us. All we have to do is have the courage to ask. Let us pray. O oh God, pour out your Holy Spirit on us as the church. Give us the power to do what we can to ask for help receive that help, and to be your people in this community and in this world. Holy Spirit, come upon us. Pour out your Spirit on us. That will give us power beyond measure. Power that we will not give away, but power that we will claim for ourselves and we receive that power with grace and gratitude amen